Please hold. I get my house in order. Oh man. We go. Come on, baby. Boom. There we go. Well, we have a very sad Thorn One Pack today. Former friend of the brewery, John Ruiz, was supposed to join me today. He's dead to me. I did put up a very flattering picture of him. Although I kind of regret it. I should have picked a very ugly one. But he's a handsome guy. So I didn't have much to choose from. Anyways, Taylor was up in L.A. today. So I'm flying solo. What I really wanted to do is I really wanted to get John's feedback on uh, the planned releases for next year. Get a little temperature check. John is, all, uh, outside of being a friend and being a co-host of my horror movie podcast, which only exists in recorded thing and nothing's ever been posted, uh... He's a stone rep, and he just switched from doing, like, off-premise chains, so, like, grocery stores, to, like, bars and restaurants. And so I wanted to know which of our releases next year that we're talking about he was most excited about so that I could use, leverage that insider information to prioritize it so we could sell more beer. Classic supplier move right there. That's when you're a supplier. When I'm talking to a friend, it's like I work for a brewery. When you're talking to a distributor, you're a supplier, and don't you forget it. You're just uh, you're trying to fill a truck for them. You know what I mean? It's business, baby. Uh, outside of that, uh, Hillcrest Brewing is ceasing brewing operations. R.I.P. Uh, Shava was a buddy of mine, the brewer over there, uh, and assistant brewer Chris, uh, great guy. Haven't spoke to them. Don't know their plans. Uh, Hillcrest Brewing, tough gig, man. If you've ever been over to Hillcrest, the the place is beautiful. That brew system was brutal. I mean, they had like it was like old milk tanks for fermenters. They had no real temperature control. It was really tough. I know when, um, yeah. I mean, when I first, actually when I first met Shaver, I think he was an assistant brewer at the time to Austin, who was the head brewer, and I believe was at Duckfoot. And uh, yeah, I mean, God bless him. It's just. Uh, I meant, welcome to COVID. I meant breweries that are mostly draft only, that have no draft beer to sell. Especially for them, they own a bunch of restaurants. If they're struggling to sell draft beer, what do you think it's like for the rest of us? Um, you know, they don't have a canning line that could pump out 100 cases an hour. And that's that's the beauty of, I guess, being of a certain size. So, shout out to those guys. It's a real bummer. Maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll shave for maybe some of his best recipes. See, we'll see if we can steal something from him. I know they're, they're looking to sell their equipment now. Uh, the owner had hit up our owner to see if there was anything we needed. But uh, God bless them. Good luck in the future, bros. Uh, we were talking about Texas uh, the other day. And in Texas, with some of their uh, COVID shit, they were telling breweries, if 51% of your sales come from beer, then you can't op operate your restaurant. And in that calculation, they were including uh, distribution and beer to go sales which is ridiculous the suggestion that food is essential um but the people who provide it to you are not essential if they also sell a bunch of kegs is kind of 
insane. So uh, if you need to eat, I guess you needed to go somewhere where they don't also make things to sell to other restaurants. I mean, is what it is. I think I think it's kind of like one of those collateral damage things, but uh, they just reversed the rules. So now they're not including those calculations into their shutdowns anymore. So all those little brew pubs can open up. They were talking about Brewery St. Arnold in Texas was like a leading figure in a lot of it. And I read an article on Brewbound. At the end, it said something about St. Archa. I don't think St. Archa has a restaurant in Texas, but I've never been to Texas. So what the fuck do I know? I Googled it, and I didn't see anything. So, But they mentioned it was something like, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool that breweries can sell food now. But, uh, you know, so you know, St. Archa is going to too. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. What are you going to do? <laughs> As if, like, like, hey, if we knew St. Archa was going to be able to sell food, we would have been like, fuck it. <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, God bless him. I'm pretty sure it's just a typo, though, because I didn't find anything on my Google search. There was uh, there's an additional can shortage. Again, something I really wanted to hear my buddy John Ruiz think about. So when we first started canning, we were like, okay. When we were buying our canning line, it's like, first off, do we do cans of bottles? And then it was like, what size cans do we do? You see, like, you know, modern times had been blowing up with the 16-ounce cans, but most people carry 12-ounce cans. I personally like a 12-ounce can. I feel like the last four ounces, <laughs> exactly the last four ounces, the precise amount of beer that is in a competitor's can that's not in my can is the worst spot. That's where it, like, gets, like, warm or whatever. But if you're in a place like a large venue that has a like you got to wait in line and shit like you don't want to get a 12 ounce beer you got to go up every 10 minutes but if you get a 16 it's a little extra beer i get it so what we were going to do is like all right we'll do 12 ounces and then we'll get those big 19.2 ounce cans and this is way back when like nobody was carrying them and then um eric had director of brewing was like no oh, it's gonna be too hard for the canning line it's like all right well I guess we just won't compete in the market because uh, your job's going to be hard. What a dink. But that's what we settled on. But now, So our can supplier at the time, so 16s, you know, craft, like small breweries, it's uh, more cost effective for them to do 16 ounces because you are, in effect, you're using a greater ratio of beer to aluminum, so it ends up being cheaper. So a lot of small breweries were getting into the can game using 16-ounce cans. So the number of 16-ounce cans being produced was going up and up. Think, when you think of like a can manufacturing plant, it does, it's not going to do some 12-ounce cans, then some 16-ounce cans, then some 19-ounce cans, then some of those 8-ounce Red Bull cans. Like the girth of the can, actually like the machine will only do a girth. So those like Red Bull cans or those slimline like uh, White Claw cans, they're not even made on the same uh, machines. So that's a completely different machine. The 12s and the 16s, I believe, are the same machine, but they have to like switch shit over. So it's like you lose production for a couple hours or for a day just to do the swap over, right? So as more and more people do 16s, it's more and more days that they have to switch the machines over. And at some point, they're like, you know what? Fuck it. We're selling all of our aluminum in 12 ounces. Why are we going to waste our time switching to, over to the 16-ounce machine? Get bent. Go get them from somebody else. And uh, I meant, fair enough. I can't say I blame them. And especially when I'm doing 12 ounces, and that encourages them to do more 12 ounces, I'm like, fuck yeah, bring it on. Like, yeah, fuck 16 ounces. 12 ounces the king. Give me my 12 ounces. And then now my can guy is like, you know, if I were you, I'd consider switching to 16s. That's the way the industry is going. It's like, man, fuck that. I don't want to switch over everything that we got. I'll be such a, what a pain in the ass. I don't know. Am I being a bitch? I kind of feel like I'm being a bitch. It's a very first world problem. But it annoys me either way. So I had actually thought it like a year ago, Dennis owner co-founder was like you should spend some time thinking about you know can aluminum is going to be an issue for a long time you should spend some time thinking about what is like the future what is like post aluminum and i'm like okay and then so we were looking at like you know the coconut water comes in like the cardboard like box things i was like okay we're good I was looking into that, but they don't hold carbonation. And then glass is old. If you're still doing glass bottles, what are you doing? Fall brewing, what are you doing? But, you know, again, when you make the decision, like, you buy a bottling line, you buy a canning line, right? So, like, we went with a canning line. Thank God. It, it. I say that now. In a year, if I can't get any cans, I'll be like, hey, Fall, you using that bottling line? I'll trade you. But uh, it is what it is. You know, they went that direction. We went this one. So now it's like, all right, am I going to be able to get cans for the next however fucking long? 
And even if I can, like, is there going to be some cool new thing that now, like, I don't have access to? So if anybody knows of what the future of packaging is, email Tom at Thorn.beer. I'd love to know it because I have some concerns about how accessible cans are going to be to us. And we actually sell a fair amount of cans. I can't imagine being a small brewery. I guess, you know what? I slightly take this back. One thing that's tough for us, if you just want a blank can, blank cans aren't that bad to get. The paint, But to get blank cans in a large quantity is hard. But if you're just a small brewery, it doesn't matter. You only want a pallet at a time anyways. I need like 20 pallets at a time. Man. Man, I got to chew on this some more. Well, anyways... I want to know the future of packaging. I went into like, uh, I did a deep dive a couple months ago. That's probably, Jesus Christ, a year and a half ago. Where does time go? A year and a half ago, those like fish edible six pack toppers that like you can throw in the ocean and it's fish food. So they're not like strangling turtles. The turtle could just eat its way out of its own noose. And they were like, you needed some like additional applicating machine to put them on. And so my search kind of hit a dead end. I've been meaning to bring that back up, and I can't find the name of the thing. Um, but I'm always looking for, like, what's, like, a different way? Some people, you know, like, you know, society, relatively new, Holland, they're doing, like, boxes. Hess does A bunch of people do them. But it's, like, a little six-pack box. Because then when you put them up on the shelf, it's, like, a little billboard, which is cool. But those boxes are kind of expensive. So what's, like, affordable but isn't? being a piece of shit to the environment you know like we use those pack tacks we reuse them which i guess is good but there is a plastic component to it i don't want to use plastic what's like the next thing i guess it's fish food i guess it is solidified fish food i gotta get back into that hold me accountable for that if anybody's listening to this hit me up in like a month if you be like yo are you still are you you look into the fish food and if i say no then i'll apologize if there's another way you can hold me accountable, I'm open to that as well. But I meant, oh, August 9th. So I had to, okay. We're doing a uh, Michelada release, right? We missed National Michelada Day. Big boner on our pot. But uh, we were like, dude, I want to do like these gross Micheladas where there's just like an absurd amount of food. And we hit up uh, O'Brien's in Kearney Mesa. And we are doing an event. It's pictured in a in the bottom diagonal in the screen, under my dead friend John Ruiz's face, and the f- the stack of food goes higher than the can of the Michelada. I love it. On what I, I got to be like when you <laughs> on what planet? It, so you figure San Diego, right? If not the, is arguably one of the best beer cities in the country, right? Very reputable. We got a million breweries, a lot of really good ones. And the best, arguably, the best beer bar in town, at least the longest running, or one of, the longest running great ones. And the guy that, uh, Tyson, the guy that co-owns the place, is willing to put a bunch of fried food (laughs) through a stick and shove it into a can of Michelada. God, I love this country. Uh... It, it, this is so one. I'm s- wicked pumped on this. It's got like it's like a pickle, a chicken wing, an onion ring, uh, celery, carrots, and then he was gonna do a jalapeno papa. But I was we had talked about bacon. I'm like, dude, give me that bacon. So I'm hoping he can do the bacon like a spike through the whole thing. It might just lay on top. Either way, August 9th at O'Brien's, we're gonna be eating those, mowing those things down on the patio. But. I think it's it's this right here, this uh, Michelada picture, I think represents an interesting uh, dynamic or dichotomy within beer. I think that there is a, uh, in craft beer specifically, there is uh, an element or a group of people that are very into education, the very hardline on styles. I think these are the people that like brown ales and amber ales and bitters and hellas lagers, and they're the people that hated hazies when they came out and they're probably a little bit more opposed to seltzer the idea i think of a michelada in general i imagine doesn't really fit their idea of what a craft brew should be doing 
shoving a bunch of fried food on top of a can of a beer of a beer that a brewery a car beer probably shouldn't be doing is probably way opposed to what they are. But this is what I love about O'Brien's, and it's I probably my favorite beer. But of the three cities I've lived in, um, Boston, San Francisco, San Diego, probably my favorite box. I think it has that perfect balance of really good beer really relaxed approachable environment it's just like a nice relaxed place to get a really good beer and that's what i really enjoy about it and this to me is exactly why i like o'brien's they'll just throw a, a fucking chicken wing on top of a can of michelada because it's fun god bless you tyson thank you so much well everybody this concludes my day i will be not my whole day but my time on facebook i will be returning with taylor michael allen tomorrow dj talon and I hope to see you August 9th at O'Brien's and August 16th here at the brewery. We're going to do our own little uh, goofy Michelada thing. We're actually trying to work with a, a Mariscos. So we'll probably do like a cup. That'll be like a shrimp cocktail. So there'll be a bunch of shrimps around it. And then TBD on the other stuff. I want like a full crab or like a whole lobster or something sticking out. Just something that's so like over the top and gross. I don't know about a full lobster. Maybe you like you just offer like three of them. But yo, know, there's only three of these. You get, but it'll be a really cool picture. It'll be like our version of the whole roasted chicken on the on the uh, picture of Bloody Mary. That's what I want. All right. God bless.